In this lecture, I will explain to you how we can synchronize between two state shorts running in parallel. To do this, uh, I have prepared a simple example. Basically, you can consider this, consider this as a simplified ca kind of car in which we have a motor that can be either stopped or running forward. And at the same time, uh, we have a gear that you can shift up and down and you can start accelerating or braking uh, to change the speed of the car. So that's uh, basically it. So let me just run the simulation because in fact the simulation is not quite complete yet. So I will see what's wrong with it and start extending it. So I'm running a simulation and we see that initially the motor is stopped and we are in the drive mode. So this is already um, perhaps something strange because this means that we can, uh, if you see here the value of the speed which is zero, I can start accelerating and with this the value of the speed will increase with by one every time I click on the accelerate. So every time we accept the accelerate event the speed will be increased by one. The, the same thing happens if I use the brake then the speed will decrease by one uh, which is triggered by this event here brake. As long as the speed is positive we will decrease the speed by one. Of course this doesn't make a lot of sense while I'm still in the stop state because there I shouldn't be able to accelerate or brake. So what I'm going to do now is to synchronize the stop state to make it impossible to uh, accelerate or brake while we are in the stop state. They should only be possible in the forward state. So how can we do this? Well, to do this we have to make modifications in the state chart and we can actually synchronize here by saying that we should only be able to accelerate if um, the motor is not in the stop state. So here uh, I can specify this by saying that the motor should not be in the stop state. So I put an extra condition here. Okay, maybe I'm going to uh, change the size a little bit of, so that we can put everything in the same picture. Move some stuff around. So now what we have here is accelerating is only possible if the motor uh, machine is not in the stop state. And the same for brake. Uh, if the speed is positive and we are not, the motor stop state is not active. So this is a synchronization constraint that we can specify. Then and then only we can increase the speed, the decrease the speed if we uh, use the brake uh, event. So if I have done this, I have a new modified state machine, which I can run again. Of course, since I have to make, I made some changes, I will have to uh, compile them again. So now I run the simulation again. And now we are in a stop state and we see that we can no longer accelerate. It doesn't have an effect on speed. We can no longer break, so everything seems to be fine from this point of view. If we want to start driving, we first have to make sure that the motor uh, state chart will be in the forward state, so we have to use the forward event to do this. And once we are in the forward event, there we can see we can accelerate. The, modif the value of speed is modified every time I launch the accelerate event. Uh, and the same for brake, whenever I use brake, the value of speed will be decreased. So this works because of course uh, the constraint that we should not be in the stop state uh, is satisfied because we are in the forward state. So now I can also show how the gears work. So whenever I'm uh, driving, I can use up to shift gears. So here I can see that uh, we have changed the value of gears. So what happened? When I use up, 
that we will verify if we are not in the maximum gear, which is in this case the sixth gear. And in that case, we will increase the gear with one. And after one second, we will continue driving. So I will do this once again, perhaps first accelerate a bit and then shift one gear up. And we will see here that uh, we will go quickly to gear up and back again. And the same happens if you want to shift gears down. So if I do this, then I will go to the gear down state and back again to drive. If I want to stop my car, then it suffices to have the uh, stop event. So I click on the stop event and then we are again in the stop state. So here perhaps uh, something more we see that uh, something we forgot to do is whenever we're in a stop state, the speed of the car is still uh, an, a value that's bigger than zero. So this again doesn't make sense. So let us modify this by adding here uh, a condition that says if the speed of the car is still bigger than zero when we stopped, then we should uh, decrease the speed by one. So why by one? Because basically what we have written now is a small loop uh, that will be triggered uh, as long as the speed is bigger than zero, we will continue to uh, verify this condition and decrease the speed by one until the speed becomes zero. So uh, let me show this again. So I'm running simulation again. And now, okay, I first have to start the motor. So I'm in forward mode. I start accelerating. So I'm now, uh, the speed is eight or nine. And then I go back to the stop mode. And here we see that the speed is decreasing to zero in a stepwise fashion. So this also works. So now the final modification I want to make is the following. I want to add uh, the possibility for the car to drive in reverse. So to do this, I have to add an extra state to the motor. So the reverse mode, uh, I have to link this from the stop mode. If we are in stop, we can go in reverse mode. And from reverse mode, we can go back to stop. Uh, okay, the state chart is complaining because the reverse event doesn't exist. So I have to add it here. And now uh, something else we also need to do is uh, because if we are in reverse mode, we should not, uh, let's say that we want to put the constraint that we should not be able to shift gears. Shifting gears should only be possible when the car is going forward. To do this, we have to again put a synchronization constraint in the gear state chart uh, to specify that shifting down gears should only be possible when we are uh, not in reverse mode. So to do this, uh, we do the same as we have done uh, here. So we have we can specify that as long as we are not, as long as the reverse state is not active, and the other condition holds, then we can shift gears down and here for shifting gears up the same as long as we are not in the reverse mode of the car and we are not yet in maximum gear we can shift gears up Okay, so let's see if this works. So I'm saving and simulating again. And now, uh, so let's see if when I'm in reverse mode, it is possible to shift gears. So accelerating and decelerating uh, is not a problem when I'm in reverse mode. I can accelerate and we see that the speed increases, or I can break and we see that the speed decreases. But 
uh, doing gear down or gear up is not possible. For example, suppose I want to shift gears up, we see that nothing happens. So simply because the condition here uh, is not satisfied for following the transition to gear up because we are currently in the reverse mode. While this condition, of course, does not hold when we are in forward mode. So if I go to forward mode, then there is no problem whatsoever to shift gears. So let's shift gears up and we see effectively that this works. So this is basically uh, how you can synchronize between two different uh, state charts, uh, basically by putting a constraint uh, that verifies uh, if you are in a particular state of the other state chart, then uh, you are not able to follow a particular transition.